Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 79. This week I'm going to be showing how you can modify some valve sensors for the camera axe to put multiple valves and their drops into a single water spout. So the use case for this is uh, those photos online where people have uh, different colored water droplets into a single water spout and you have colliding drops of different colors. So if you just have one valve, you can only drop one color out of it. You could have the reservoir in a different color than the droplet, but if you want more colors than that, uh, you need to have a second valve like this. And you can kind of, I've done some experimentation, you can kind of get it working by uh, angling two valve sensors like this and having them sort of at an angle. Uh, it's not ideal and it really doesn't work for more than two droplets. So um, what I'm going to show today would work up to four valves because that's how many uh, valves the camera X can drive independently. Uh, however, um, today I'm just going to show you with two because uh, it's easier, it takes less time to set up and it's sort of a proof of uh, concept. And I'm going to be uh, filming this as I go along, so hopefully I don't make uh, too many mistakes and uh, things go smoothly. Let's start building. So there's lots of ways to do this, uh, but what I decided to do is to separate uh, the reservoir from the valve and then join them together with a piece of uh, rubber tubing. Now all of these parts, these are the three parts I needed uh, to make this modification. Um, I chose to go with a smaller uh, 1 8 inch barb because I'm going to replace this bottom barb. I think this smaller barb uh, will be possibly an improvement, but at the very least it'll be a little bit different. Uh, and then I picked a big barb. Uh, I think this is a quarter inch barb to match uh, this barb. Basically I'm going to take these two pieces and put them in between here, put the tubing between them, and uh, we should then have the uh, solenoid here disconnected from the reservoir. So uh, this is assembled pretty easily. It's just a thing that twists apart here. And uh, to get that off, I'm going to use a pliers. So this is just sort of deassembling the camera axe at this part, or the valve sensor at this point. So now we've got these two pieces disconnected and uh, also going to disconnect this piece. So um, this white stuff is just uh, Teflon tape. It helps prevent leaks. I'm actually going to put just a little bit more on. Most likely it wouldn't leak, but, you know, just to be safe, I'm going to use a little bit of Teflon tape here. Just go around it a few times. And then this other one, same thing. So all of the parts that I'm using here, I think I mentioned this before, but in case I didn't, I got them from local hardware store, um, Home Depot in particular, but any significantly sized uh, uh, home improvement store or will have these kinds of parts, especially if they have a plumbing section, that's where I got these from. So now at this point, I'm just going to screw this in. So these are all, uh, as this package says, it's quarter inch MIP threaded. So 
So just do this until it's snug because everything's plastic. I don't want to get it too tight. But you do feel when it kind of reaches the end of the threads. Uh, and then for this one, this valve has an arrow right here. I don't know if you can see that online very well, but there's an arrow right there. So this is going to be the part that's pointing down, which means I want to put the barb pointing that way. We'll go back to the pliers. Okay, so now at this point, these two can be connected with this tubing. That'll help slide this tubing. Now you could do something totally different. You could uh, get bigger tubing and actually um, use this piece and get another similar piece for the valve and then put the tubing over the threads and use a hose clamp to hold them on. Uh, but these are the parts that I uh, kind of had on hand, so that's what I'm using today. Okay, so now at this point, the valve reservoir is disconnected from this, and we can kind of angle and point uh, the solenoid where we want. I'm going to use a little more of this. Teflon tape. I'm just going to Put that in here. So we're just getting it snug here. And don't want to over tighten these. Looks good to me. So, we have now is we have, let me zoom out here a bit. So what we have now is we have the solenoid portion disconnected from the reservoir portion. So we're gonna mount this to a board, um, but uh, this is sort of what we wanted at this point. So now I'm going to continue on and do a second one of these and then I'll come back and show you how we're going to mount them. Here are the two valve sensors I've modified and I've mounted them to a board to make it a little easier to do that two drops into a single water spout shot that I was talking about earlier. So here are the solenoids. I'm just holding those in place with these clamps and that's so that uh, I can easily adjust where they uh, go, uh, where the nozzles have the drop released so that I can make sure that they're going into the exact same spot. Uh, I just use some rubber bands to hold the batteries in place. And then the actual reservoirs, I have these inch and a quarter inch uh, tube clamps and they're just screwed into the board. You can just use regular uh, temporary clamps but I had these sitting around so uh, they work well. They allowed me to easily move the uh, reservoirs up and down until I got them in the, the right height 
So this is, you know, very simple to set up. Took me uh, maybe five minutes to modify the two valve sensors and uh, maybe another 10 minutes to mount it to the board. So here I'm mixing the exanthin gum with some water. I've done a video about this mixture before and I'll just add some food coloring. You want it pretty dark because remember the droplets are going to be uh, relatively thin. So we'll mix that up and the uh, then we'll do a red one and the mixture should be ready to go. So here's the final setup that's actually working for colliding droplets of different colors. <clears throat> the uh, trick ended up being that I have these um, stoppers with tubes attached in the valve sensor and those go up there and the point of those is to reduce the pressure going into the valves and make it more consistent so you get consistent drops. It turns out that uh, you need a higher pressure than those we're giving uh, coming from these valves so that they'll have momentum and actually sort of m hit the same point in the water. So without removing those tubes, I really couldn't get a collision. But once I tried removing uh, those pressure uh, equalizing tubes, then I set these valves up and I had to do some tweaking of the exact positions, but that was good. And I was able to get some nice shots of different colored droplets hitting each other. Uh, I think that maybe colored milk would look better. Uh, the, the colors kind of merge when it's just this translucent water, but uh, this is more of a proof of principle that it definitely can be done. Um, during the process, before I tried removing uh, the actual valves, I tried attaching this little uh, dongle thing after the the actual valves here and I had connected one of these tubes to each of the valves like so and uh, that redirected the droplets but they were still about a quarter of an inch apart with that tubing so it didn't really uh, make them collide. I do think if you wanted to have multiple drops next to each other uh, using little bits of this flexible tubing and connecting them post the valve would be a, a good mechanism to do that, but uh, to actually collide them, turns out the best method is to just make sure you remove the uh, the the tubes in the top of these uh, valve sensors that equalize the pressure, so you get higher pressure at the uh, solenoids, and then just sort of aim them in the direction you want, tweak the positions in a light room, and eventually you'll start getting uh, colliding droplets with different colors, which is pretty cool. So one other thing I'll mention is that the uh, software was a pain to set up. I got so used to the uh, uh, auto calibrate mode that I kind of forgot how uh, not fun it is to not use that mode. But I had to, there, the auto calibrate doesn't work with multiple valves like this, so I had to set it. So I'm just gonna go through the settings. I have two valves. Uh, you the drop size for valve one is all you need. You don't want an offset, so that's the only thing you're going to set with valve one. Uh, the flash delay is the main thing you want to set on this menu, and uh, I have that set to 280 milliseconds. And then uh, on valve number two, uh, you just set the size to something that works well, and then you have to play with offset. And so I have an offset of 160. And basically, to make this work, as you de or increase the offset of uh, valve 2, you're going to want to... So you're increasing, increasing the offset, you're going to decrease the flash delay. And that will kind of keep the... Uh, droplet at the, the same point. So what I did was I uh, worked with just valve one and this flash menu to start with and disabled flash, uh, valve two and uh, got a nice spout. So that was a, a good timing uh, for valve one. And then I basically 
continuously decreased the flash delay as I increased the uh, the offset until I got the Clyde and drops. So there was definitely some playing around I had to do uh, with the software menus, but uh, in the end, I was pretty happy with the results. And uh, this is hopefully this was helpful to those of you trying to do advanced uh, droplet photography. Thanks for watching.